فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحديث الثاني ذا سكن حديث في الصيام شرعا The second hadith is fasting. What does it mean technically? What does fasting mean technically? An Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل عمل ابن آدم يضاعف الحسنة بعشر أمثالها إلى سبعمائة ضعف. قال الله عز وجل إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به يدع شهوته وطعامه من أجلي متفق عليه This hadith it explains for us the meaning of fasting technically what does fasting mean Fasting is al-imsaku, it is to withhold. What does the religion understand as fasting? That's what this topic is about. What does Islam consider fasting? What is fasting? Fasting is to withhold from food. And it's also to withhold from drinking. And it is also to withhold from your desires. Why? Ta'abbudan lillahi ta'ala in worshipping Allah. That's why you do it. You are worshipping Allah in doing this. Wastijabatan li amrihi and you're following and submitting and adhering to his command. Wa musara'atan li ridahu and you are hastening to pleasing him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the hadith, what did it say? Min ajli for my sake. And in another wording, another riwayah, another wording says, Yatruku ta'amahu wa sharabahu wa shahwatahu min ajli. He leaves his food. He's drinking. He's desires for my sake. The meaning of shahwa is, or the hadith when it said shahwa, the word shahwa means al jima'. It means sexual intimacy, sexual relationship. And it could also mean, it could also mean all forms of desires. And there's a riwayah, a wording which is in the book Sahih ibn Khuzayma Ibn Khuzayma narrated this in which the Prophet sallallahu said that Allah said يَدَعُ الطَّعَامَ He leaves of food min ajli for my sake وَيَدَعُ الشَّرَابَ and he leaves of drinking min ajli for my sake وَيَدَعُ لَذَّتَهُ and he leaves of his enjoying enjoying something him enjoying something, min ajri for my sake. وَيَدَّعُ زَوْجَتَهُ And he leaves off his wife, min ajri for my sake. So the hadith separated between what? what? Leaving off what you enjoy and leaving off your wife. And as a side point, some of the scholars, they took from this hadith that one playing with their 
Private part. One playing with his private part, th that which then leads to to release. This is something that will go will take the same ruling as sexual intimacy. Yeah, it takes the ruling as sexual intimacy. There's a kafara, an expiation that is placed on that individual. Because the hadith specifically mentions The Quran has shown the time of fasting from when to when. Allah wa ta'ala he said وَكُلُوا وَشَرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ Allah says, eat and drink until the, the white rope becomes clear from the black rope. In other words, from the sunset, From the, uh, sorry, from dawn or sunrise to sunset. Tulu' al-Fajr, when Salat al-Fajr. And we carry on until night. So the leaving of food in this hadith, and the leaving of drinking in this hadith, and the leaving of your sexual relationship with your wife is meant in this period of time. So you are allowed to drink after Salat al-Maghrib. You are allowed to eat after Salat al-Maghrib. And yes, you are allowed to have sexual relationship with your family after Salat al-Maghrib. Eating and drinking means, what does, what does it mean in this hadith to eat and drink? It means, إِصَالُ الطَّعَامِ To make the food reach. Or the drinking to reach to your stomach either through your mouth or your nose and it does not matter what type of food it is and it doesn't matter what type of drinking or whatever you're drinking it doesn't matter <coughs> as for Injections in which doctors give to a patient who is sick, which is for medical reasons, or a person takes a pill and it is put from be behind, takes a pill and it is put from behind, huh? The scholars, they differ on this. The scholars, they differ on this. Some of the scholars, they see that it is what? That it is, it breaks your fasting. And there are those who say, no, this matter needs detailed explanation. Especially if the injection or the pill leads to the person becoming energized. Just like when you eat food, the energy that you get from it. If the injection and the syringe that's being used or the pill that you're taking from behind is making you strong and is giving you energy and is playing like the role of a food. The scholars, they speak about that in details. If you want, you can see it in the book Al-Fatawa Al-Muta'aliqatu Bit-Tibbi Wa Ahkamu Al-Marda or a book, uh, other books which the fuqaha in which they deal with it. But what is better for the patient and the sick person is that if you can delay it, فَإِنْ أَخَّرَهَا الصَّائِمُ The one who is fasting, if he can delay it, and push it back to the night time is more safer for him without a doubt 
Because he leaves off this argument and this disputation that the scholars are differing on. Because the hadith of the Prophet says, Stay away from that which there is doubt in it and go to that which there is clarity and there is no doubt in it. And of course the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَأَ لِدِيرِي وَعِرْضِهِ Anyone who stays away from the doubtful things, for verily he has what? He has freed and he's protected his religion and his honor. But if the person is in need of it, and he is sick, then the reality is that he shouldn't even be fasting at all. As for the injections that do not, inshallah ta'ala, that don't give you any form of energy, and they're just a form of medication, inshallah what is apparent is annaha la tufattir, that inshallah ta'ala it doesn't break your fasting, because it's not a form of energy. It just only goes into the stomach or it goes into your system, but it doesn't give you any form of what? Energy. And there is no harm for the person to use the uh, inhaler huh? whilst he is fasting. There is no problem for him to use it. From the strongest opinions of the scholars and the people of knowledge. The reason is because this inhaler, which the inhaler, right? In which the person is taking, it's smoke. And the smoke won't reach the stomach at all. It will fade out before it goes to the stomach. <coughs> the person taking kuhl. Men or women are allowed to. Kuhl is eyeliner. Sahih? On the eye. Because sometimes if you take a lot of it, you can taste it from your throat. The eyeliner, the kuhl. It won't break your fast. It does not break your fast. Anything a person tries to put up their nose breaks your fast. Because of the hadith of Laqit ibn Sabira. The hadith of Laqit ibn Sabira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in which Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Nasa'i and Ibn Majah and other than them narrated it, and Tirmidhi said, هذا حديث حسن صحيح, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, وبالغ في الاستنشاق let the water go deep into your nose. Illa and takuna sa'iman. Only if you're fasting. Only if you're fasting. So sometimes these people who clean their nose out, who put things in there, they should stay away from it. We'll stop there for this hadith, inshaAllah ta'ala. Allahumma faqihna fi faqihna fi dinina. Warzukna al amala bihi. Wal istiqama ta'alayhi. Wa yassirna lil yusra. وجنبنا العسرى واغفر لنا في الآخرة والأولى ولوالدينا ولجميع المسلمين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله استغفرك وأتوب إليه